Hello, how are you doing? Hope is another blessed day that you're here. Uh, I'm so much happy that uh, today we are speaking about this topic. Is once saved, always saved? This is a topic which is always quite controversial, especially amongst believers. Some think you can be able to lose your salvation, while others think, no, you're saved once and for all. And uh, I would like us to uh, be able to expound on the same topic so that it can be able to sink and you can be able to understand, are you really saved once or is there something that you need to do to keep your salvation for a while? And uh, is there something that you can do and then uh, you, you're no longer saved? Or is there a way that you can part away from God and then you can, you know, lose your salvation and things like that? So now, as we start, i like us to start from the book of uh, Hebrews 10.10. 10. Hebrews 10.10 10 to 12. This is where we are going to start our reading today. Uh, Hebrews 10.10, 10, it says, by, by the which which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. All right? Uh, and every priest stands daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after he, has, he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand uh, of God. So Jesus, we are told that he offered sacrifice once and for all. Offered his sacrifice. His sacrifice once. You know, he's saying once for all. So we are told that Jesus has offered his sacrifice once for all, forever, for. Literally, it's just once for all, forever. So that's the first point that we are seeing, that Jesus has already offered the sacrifice once for all, forever. Uh, let's, let's, let's check again in uh, Romans 6.23. I want us just to check many, many, many Bible verses and so that we can be able to dissect it uh, through the Bible. I don't want to give my own words because... I, I don't want it to be me speaking. I want the Bible to speak these things. Romans 6.23, 6.23, the Bible says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death, all right? Sin is death, but the gift, gift of God is eternal life. All right. So we already told that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of life is eternal life. So we see already salvation is a gift. So salvation here is already a gift. Salvation. Salvation uh, is already a gift. So if you're given a gift, if I give you a gift, can you lose a gift? Can you be able to lose something that you're given? Uh, is it possible? And we have been told that once you get this gift, this gift is eternal. Is what, what do we mean by the word eternal? It's forever. It's eternal. You're not given this gift until a certain time. You're not given this gift until a certain specific time when maybe you sin or you do something. But you're given the gift once and for all. All right. Let's go to Hebrews 9.12. Hebrews 9.12. Hebrews uh, 9. Uh, verse 12, neither by the blood of goats and cows, but by his own blood, he entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. So Jesus obtained eternal redemption, eternal redemption for us. All right. So now, what is this eternal redemption? What is to be redeemed? To be redeemed is the time that you're going to be taken off this body, this sinful body, at the day of rapture. This one will happen at the day of rapture. All right? At the day of rapture, you're going to be uh, redeemed of this body, the body of sin. So we have eternal redemption through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, we have eternal redemption. So we have been redeemed already. And it's for eternity, all right? Let's see, Hebrews 5.9. Hebrews 5.9. The Bible says, uh, 
And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto them that obey him. So Jesus is the author of eternal salvation. Eternal. Eternal salvation. Eternal salvation. So we are keeping on seeing one word occurring so much here. Eternal life, eternal salvation, eternal redemption. You see? Once for all. Now, if you see these words, what do these words really mean? Does it mean this thing is temporal? Does it mean it is until you until you do something or maybe until maybe you, you, you do something wrong is when you're going to lose this? Is eternal something which you can lose? Can you lose something which is given to you eternal, for, for eternity? Can you lose it? Let's keep on checking. Uh... And, and actually, concerning this, eternal salvation is to them that obey him. It's saying that being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. How do you obey Jesus Christ? By obeying what he told you. All right? Obey. Obey. How do you obey? By believing. Believing the gospel. All right? So Jesus gave... Jesus gave orders. He said, if you want to be saved, believe the gospel. So if you obey what he has told you, he already tells you that, hey, I'm going to give you eternal salvation. If you obey the gospel, I'll give you eternal salvation. So you, this will be eternal. The salvation that I'm going, not going to give you it will not be temporal. It will be eternal, eternal salvation. All right. So let's, let's just see uh, the actual Jesus words. The words that Jesus gave with his own mouth concerning salvation and what he said, so that we can be able to understand is it really true that is eternal or not? Okay. John 336. Let's go to John 336. John 336 and see what uh, he says. He says, He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abided on, on him. He that believeth the Son has everlasting life. All right? So if you believe the Son, he's saying that we'll have everlasting. Everlasting life. So if you believe the Son, he already says you'll have everlasting life. But if you don't believe the Son, you shall, uh, but the wrath of God will abide on you. So, if you'll have everlasting life, can you lose something which is everlasting? Keep on checking. Let's keep on checking. We know one very famous verse, John 3, 16. Everybody, almost everybody knows this in the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life or eternal life. So, if you believe in Jesus... You will have everlasting life. So can you lose something which is everlasting? If I tell you I give you life, I will give you life for eternity. Can you lose something which is eternal? Is it really possible? Uh, you can, I, I think you can only lose something that you have given yourself, but not something that Jesus has given unto you. So if Jesus has given you something and he has told you, I've given you this for eternity. I think the only way you can lose it is if you gave it to yourself. You see that those people believe that they are saved by doing something. You're saved by repeating a certain prayer. You're saved by maybe getting baptized. You're saved by doing something. You're saved by giving some tithe and offering. You're saved because you always went to a certain church. And uh, if it's this that you think saves you, then... Probably you may lose your salvation because you gave it to yourself. But if it's Jesus who gave you the salvation and he already told you, I give you for eternity. The salvation is for eternity. It's once and for all. Then how are you going to lose something that is for eternity? All right. How are you going to lose it? John 5, 24. John 5, uh, 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life so if you believe if you believe on him that sent me who if you believe god who sent jesus 
You have everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death into life. So if you believe, if you believe, you pass from death to life. All right? So if you believe, the Bible says, once you believe, you pass from death unto life. So if you have believed and you have come here, you have, you're no longer dead and now you're alive. Does it mean it will reach a time that now you will die or it is not eternal anymore? All right. So I need us to understand and we can be able to understand much more easier. John 6, John 6, 47. Let's check John 6, 47. Uh, let me put that off. I don't want you to make noise here. John uh, 6, 47. The Bible tells us something. Uh, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me has everlasting life. If you believe, you have everlasting life. The Bible says here, Jesus with his own words, if you believe in him, you have everlasting life. I want us to see those words very clearly. And you tell me if you can lose something which is everlasting. Let's keep on checking. Uh... John 10, 20, uh, 10, 27 to around 30. John 10, 27 to around 30. And Jesus says this, My sheep hear my voice. All right? That's the first statement. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. All right? Uh, and I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. I give unto them eternal life, all right? Everlasting life or eternal life. I give unto them, my sheep, eternal life, and they shall never perish. So the Bible says, this sheep will never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So it means Jesus already has put his sheep here at the palm of his hand and has locked it like this. So he says, uh, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Look at verse 29. My father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. So you're already here and then the father already again puts his hand like this. All right. And he says, I and my father are one. So how are you going to pluck yourself here? Is sin going to pluck you from here? Is a... Uh, Anything going to pluck you from here? If, if, if uh, you have to be plucked from there, then they have to pluck God the Father and then pluck God the Son and then take you out. Is it really possible? Because it's been said, no one can pluck you from my hand. John 14, 16. John 14, uh, 16. And I, will, and I will pray the Father... And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. So Jesus says, I'll give you another comforter to abide with you forever. Who is a comforter? Comforter is the Holy Spirit. And we are told he will abide with you forever. So the Holy Spirit will abide with you forever. So... If the Holy Spirit is with you forever, how, what's going to, you see, we have been told, now, God the Father is already with you forever. God the Son is with you forever. The Holy Spirit is with you forever. The three, the Trinity is already with you forever. How are you going to be plucked out? How are you going to lose this salvation? How, how is it going to happen? It's really, mm, I think it's really not possible. Let's, let's see Paul's words. You see, Paul is the apostle uh, for the Gentiles, is, is our apostle right now. And uh, we need to check what he says because really, really could be very important to us. Romans 8.35. Romans 8.35 all the way to 39. Let's see what he says. Paul says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? All right, let's see. 36, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted the sheep 
for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded. Now, listen here what Paul says. For I am persuaded. Paul, what are you persuaded about? For I am persuaded that neither death, death, all right, nor life, okay, nor angels, nor principalities, that includes the principalities of darkness and everything like that, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So Paul literally says nothing, nothing, all right? He says nothing will be able to separate you from the love of Christ, nothing. So if Paul says that, Jesus says that nothing can be able to separate you from the love of Christ. Do you think something will be able to come and tell you, no, 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 you're not saved. Come out. You're not saved. He say, no, 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 you're not saved. Come out. Is it really possible? Is it really possible? All right. And uh, let's see 2 Corinthians 1, 21. 2 Corinthians 1, 21. Uh, all the way to 22. He says, Now he which establishes us with uh, you in Christ and has anointed us is God. So he says, the one who has established us, all right, the one who has established us is, is, is who? With you in Christ and has anointed us is God. So God is the one who has established us. To verse 22, who has also sealed us and given the earnest of the spirit in our hearts. So God already has given the spirit in our heart. He has given the Holy Spirit. Now, we already have the Holy Spirit in us. All right. So now, if you have the Holy Spirit inside you, how, how, how are you going to lose your salvation? How, how possible is it going to be that you're going to lose your salvation and say, no, 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 it's, it's not possible. I think I lost it. I think I, lo I lost my salvation. How is it going to be possible? For me, I believe one thing. Losing your salvation, if you're sealed, you're told that you're sealed. You say that you're sealed. If you're sealed, it means this is permanent. If you seal, if you seal uh, a can, maybe a can of tomato paste, and you seal it from the factory, and you're told this one will only be unsealed uh, at a specific time, maybe when people are when when the party starts is when you will unseal it, or maybe you have sealed an envelope, you have you have taken an envelope, you have sealed and you have closed it, and you have said now it will only be opened by the owner. Or maybe it will only be opened at, the, at a specific time. So how, how is someone else going to unseal it, which is permanent? How, how, how is it going to be done? Sealing is permanent. Let's see Ephesians 1.13. Ephesians 1.13. The Bible tells us something about this. In whom also you trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom after that you believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So immediately you believed, believe, you are sealed with who? With the Holy Spirit. All right? So when you believe, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And verse 14 tells us, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession and to the praise of his glory. So we are told this is the earnest of the, of the what? It's the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession into the praise of his glory. So now, when, when you're saved, when you're born, you have three parts. You have three parts. The fact you have the body, the soul, and the spirit. All right. So when you're born, you have three parts: the body, the soul, and the spirit. And when you're born, remember, the spirit is dead. Why? Because of sin. The moment Adam sinned, the spirit died, and we are all after the image of Adam. All right. According to Genesis five three, you can go and read there. We are under the we are after the image of Adam as long as we are sinners. All right. But when you get saved, this these two. When you get saved, 
These two, the Holy Spirit comes in. All right? The Holy Spirit comes in and is sealed inside you. So according to God, this body is already dead. This body, sorry, this body, according to God, is dead. When he looks at you, he doesn't see the body. He only sees the body which Christ has already put on top of you because you, you will be redeemed on the day of the rapture or the day when uh, you die and, and uh, Jesus comes. That's the time that you'll be redeemed and you'll be given another body. So already, according to God, you're already in the image of Christ. You're not in the old image that you had with the sinful body. And this one is a purchased possession. This is a purchased possession. This is the new creature. You hear that you become a new, a new creature. All right. So this is the new creature. This is the purchased possession. Let me write well here. This is the new creature. All right. This is the new creature. It is also the purchased possession. So God did not purchase this. He purchased this because once you're saved, he is going to give you a new body when the rapture happens. So now this is the is the one which God has already redeemed. So that is what this is the purchase possession. We 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 can we, you you can see there in uh, Ephesians uh, 1:14, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. So He's going to redeem this. He's going to redeem this. So your your soul is safe. He's going to give you another body. Now what happens when you die? When you die. This body goes to the grave. All right. When you die, this is soil. It is. It says that from from soil you came and you will go back there. So this is. It goes to the grave. Whether you're a sinner or you're not a sinner, this body always will go back to the grave. Okay. If you're a sinner, it will go to the grave. If you're a Christian, it will go to the grave. All right. If you're a Christian. It, this will go to the grave and then you'll get another new body, glorified body. But if you're a sinner, this will go to the grave and your soul will go to, the, to hell. But now if you're saved, this will go to the grave and this one will go to heaven. All right. So this new creature will go to heaven and this body will go to the grave. So that's why it said, don't always walk in the flesh, walk in the spirit. Walking the Spirit is doing things which God wants, all right? And this creature, a very funny thing about this creature, this new creature cannot sin, all right? Cannot sin. You see that those people who say, nah, nah, you can sin, you can sin. But when you sin, you know, nah, this creature cannot sin. What sins is your body, all right? Now, let me show you that. First John 3, 6, let's go there. Let me show you that this creature cannot sin. 1 John 3, uh, verse 6. 1 John 3, 6. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever abideth in him, all right? When you believe you abide in Christ, you sin not, all right? 3, 6. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. So if you're saying that you sin, you you. If you are, you are sinning, then you have not known him. Those who are unsaved, unsaved will sin. All right? Whosoever is saved cannot sin. All right? Why am I speaking this way? Why am I talking this way? Because this one is already a new creature. Let's say, for example, you are an antelope and now you've totally changed. You are no longer an antelope. You are a goat. So will a goat and an antelope be the same thing again? No. Take, for example, have you ever seen this uh, GMO foods like uh, maize or beans? GMO, like genetically modified. Once it is modified, it can never go back to the old nature. It's not possible. It's the same way when you are born. The Bible says, tells us, unless you're born in water and in spirit, you can never enter the, uh, the kingdom of God. So water and spirit is what? Water is the time that you're born from a woman. All right? Water. When you're born, when you're born, uh, the water breaks. A woman giving birth, the water breaks. 
And after that, we are told, unless you're born of water and spirit. So, when is this spirit born? The moment you get saved, the Holy Spirit comes inside you. And immediately your spirit comes alive. So, you are born again. So, if this born of water, the, the first one that you were born by your own mother, you cannot wake up and say, no, you see, I'm not really sure if I'm born. I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure if I've been born. Then it means, also this time, you can't be unsure that you're unborn. Because the moment you're believed, you're believed. Salvation is like wedding or... Uh, it's like wedding or is like uh, being born. You can say, I'm not sure if I'm married. Like, I'm not really sure. You have the ring. You have already confirmed. You signed the papers and you still say, am I really born? Is it really true that I'm born? No, you can't be unborn. All right. So it's really, really important to understand that because it will help you in your spiritual growth to be able to understand what you're doing. Okay. Let's continue here. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 1 Thessalonians 5.23 It says something here mm, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 Where is it? 23, 23, yeah uh, We can read 23 to 24 And the very good And the very God of peace Sanctify you holy Alright And, and uh, sanctify you holy And I pray your God I, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So, he's saying that he hopes that you will be, you'll be, uh, you will be, um, let me, let me, conf the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, uh, God, your whole spirit and body and soul be preserved blameless. So, who is going to preserve you? Preserve you? Preserve? Who is going to preserve you? God. God is the one who is going to preserve you. So you don't keep your salvation. It is kept by God himself. Do you know um, when a, the best man, when a, a wedding is a, supposed to happen, the best man keeps the rings. He's a, a very trusted guy and he's, he keeps the rings until the time at the altar and then he can give out the ring. So they are entrusted by this guy. So this is the guy who, is, who keeps the rings until that time. He preserves them. And uh, when you're born again, your salvation is kept by God. Until the day that you're going to be married to Christ. So he keeps it very well. So if, if God is keeping your salvation, how can you lose something that you're not even keeping? How can you lose it? All right. And uh, verse 24 says, Faithful is he that calls you, who also will do it. So God called you unto salvation, and he will preserve it. He will preserve your salvation. 2 Timothy 1, 9. 2 Timothy 1, 9. Who has saved us and called us with unholy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So Jesus saved us and called us to with an unholy calling. And uh, we have been told that not according to our own works. You're not saved by your own works. All right? You're not saved by your own works, but according to his own purpose and grace. What is grace? Grace is getting something that you don't deserve. Grace. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. We did not deserve to be saved. But Jesus saved us through grace. We are total filthy sinners. Actually, in uh, the book of Isaiah uh, 64, 6, it says that our righteousness is like filthiness. It is like filthy rags, according to God. So we can't save ourselves un unless we are saved by grace of Jesus Christ. So it is grace which saves us, is not anything else. And if you understand that, then you will be knowing that for sure, for sure, you've been saved by grace. And you can lose something that you've been given for free. All right. Let's continue here. Uh, let's check here. Romans 8, 15. Romans 8, 15. I just want to give you a couple of verses so that you can be able to understand. Romans 8, 15. Romans 8, 15, 17. 
The Bible says, uh, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. All right? So the spirit of God that we have is not to make us fear all the time thinking, uh, am I going to lose it? Am I, you know, it's, it's not a spirit of fearing. People keep on fearing, have I been saved for real? Will I really lose it? No. We don't have the spirit of fear. We have the spirit of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a spirit that we can cry, Abba, Father. Why? Because we are now adopted children. We are children of God. Now we can say, Abba, Father, please help me in this. Help me in that. Help me in that. I know I, I cannot be able to do this on my own. Help me. Help me in this and this and this and this. Okay. Let's, let's continue there, down there. Verse 16. The Spirit itself. The Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So the Holy Spirit tells us, hey, you are a child of God. You don't have to fear. You don't have to fear anything. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. We can also be glorified together. So now... If, you're, if, if this is happening, then how can you be able to lose your salvation? I'm, I'm really wondering, how can you be able to lose your salvation? Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians 4.15. 1 Corinthians 4.15. I just want to give you verses so that you can uh, understand it in your own way and ask yourself if really you can... Uh, be able to lose your salvation. Now, the Bible tells us that we are saved by the gospel. We are saved by the gospel. All right? The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We can confirm this. 1 Corinthians 4.15. It says... For though we have, you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you have not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. In Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. That is Apostle Paul saying, I have begotten you through the gospel. So the gospel is where you are saved, is what saves you. So what happens if you have been begotten then? What happens with you if you are saved? When you are saved, several things happen. When you're saved, several things happen. Uh -huh. Let me show you this. When you're saved, several things happen. Let me, let me just even wrap this one. There's a big transformation when you're saved. Number one, you become uh, the children of God. Children of God. Once you saved, you become the children of God. You become the sons. So sons is literally the same, the same, 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 uh, you know, the same thing. Sons of God. The Bible uh, says it in different ways. You become the children of God or the sons of God. You're adopted. All right. When you adopt a child, let's say, for example, you adopt a child and then that child becomes unruly. And he says, oh, no, he starts joining gangs and they're stealing from banks and they're doing all that. Is the child still yours? Yes, he's still yours. If he dies in whatever he's doing, he will be buried by who? You. You signed the papers. You already signed the papers and you already took the child from the government. You took the child from the government and you said, I am going to adopt this child. It's going to be my own child. So you did not adopt him for only the good times. The Bible says very well. Uh, in Hebrews, Hebrews uh, 12, 6, let me, let me show you about what a child, what happens with a child when he messes up. Hebrews 12, 6, 12, 6, the Bible says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteth, he chasteneth, and scourges every son whom he receiveth. All right? Who, uh, whom he receiveth. So, when you do something wrong, all right, a good son good son is rewarded right and a bad son is punished or corrected all right 
So God, he knows he has adopted us. And they are good and bad children. Even in the normal family, we have good and bad children. So good children are always rewarded with maybe some toys. They are rewarded with good things, good life, good, uh, you know, they, 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 they get some benefits on the same. And that's why we are told we have something called the judgment seat of Christ. Why do you have judgment seat of Christ? Christians will not be judged with the world. No. We have our own judgment, which is called the judgment seat of Christ. Judgment seat of Christ. Immediately the rapture happens, we are going to be judged here. And imagine the kind of judgment that you're going to get is what? For rewards, to get rewards. All right? The, both the good and the bad things will be passed through fire. And then you get your rewards. So if you're not going to be judged like the sinners, the sinners, people who have never been saved, they'll be judged at the great white throne judgment all right so these guys these are sinners these are uh, saved so why are we having a judgment for the saved people if these saved people will go to hell when they sin and we are told both the good and the bad things that you did we are not told the good things will be judged here because now that one will mean that then it's a different kind of uh, a judgment then Christians will be judged here. Judgment will start in the church, okay? And then it will go here. So it means we'll be judged for the rewards, the things that we did good, all right? And the bad ones will be burned through fire. And then the bad children, this is the, this is the Christians, eh? this is the good, this is the saved people, all right? They are the good and the bad things that they did. So the good things will be rewarded. The bad thing will be punished. And punishment is they will... They will be finished in fire. All the things that you did for your own sake, you are giving to someone. Like the way I also see, I always say on Facebook and, and uh, social media, you find maybe a grandmother with some children at the street, they have no food, and then you go and buy food and give them. And then as you give them, you, 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 you're taking a selfie. Hey, I'm giving, this, I'm giving these poor guys here. So when you do that, you've already paid yourself. God looks at the heart, looks at the intention. So if you do that, then that according to God is, the, is a bad deed because you did not do it out of a clean heart. And when it comes to the time of the rewards at the judgment seat of Christ, that one will, it will go, it will burn up. So it's really important to understand this. And if you don't understand this, then you'll always be keeping on thinking, uh, am I losing it or what's really happening? So you become a child of God, a son of God, an adopted child. All right. You're a new creature. Jesus is in you, and you're also in Jesus, and you're seated already at the throne. So how are you going to lose something? And you're also in, Christ is in you. You're also a part of the members, members of Christ. So I, I don't understand how you can lose your salvation. Uh, Galatians 4.6. All right. Galatians 4.6. Let me just uh, paraphrase it. Eh? And because your sons, God has set forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Because your sons, God has sent his spirit crying, Abba, Father. So crying, Abba, Father means you can cry anytime and tell God, God, the way I'm feeling, uh, I'm, I feel like I want to lie to this person. So please, please, please help me not to lie. I feel like <laughs> somebody just sent me some m -Pesa and I know it's wrong. I should not use this because it was just a mistake. And this person, will maybe it may be school fees. But then you tell God, please, please, please show me a way out because the way I'm feeling, I'm going to use this money. And then you cry, Abba, Father, please help me. And then he finds an, a different way. Maybe somebody else helps you in a thing that you wanted to do and you give out that money. You see, it's, it's a relationship between a father and a child. A father and a child. Hey, Dad, this is what I'm feeling. This, you see, you don't tell your father only the good things. You say, Dad, I did this. I was very good in school. No, you also tell them, hey, in school, I'm being monolized. And this is happening. I'm also being tempted to do this. I, I stole a book. Dad, please help me. Next time I should not steal a book. I should have my own book. You see, it's a relationship between a son and a child. All right. Sometimes your father will, you know, cane you and tell you, don't repeat that again. But he will never leave you. The Bible says he will never leave you or forsake you. You will never be left or forsaken. All right. Galatians 3.26 Galatians 3, 26, it says, For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. You are all children of God. 
So if you're children of God, a child of God, do you think God is going to send away his kids and tell them, hey, go away? No. He also gave us by the example of the prodigal son. He went away for so long. He did his own things. But when he came back, he was still the child of that father. His father never left him. He said, bring all, bring the, bring the, the, the ring. Let, let me put a ring on his finger. Let me bring all the good food, bring everything. He hugged him. He did not even care because why? He was already his child. He was already sure this is a child. But what about if he went and then he is no longer the child? Maybe he's a child of a neighbor. Do you think the neighbor could? T- it doesn't work like that. When you're a child of someone, you're a child of someone. All right. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. This is a very famous verse for those who read the Bible a lot. So you already know where I'm heading with this. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace you are saved through faith. And that, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. You're saved. By grace you are saved through faith. So your faith, you're saved by faith. All right. In short, let me, let me, let me write it like this. The Bible says you are saved through gra- by grace through faith, all right, in the gospel. So you are saved by grace through faith in the gospel. Faith in the gospel. The gospel is literally, I'm talking about Jesus because Jesus is the one who is talking about this. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So that's what I'm calling the gospel. You're saved by grace. Grace is de- getting what you don't deserve. Faith. Faith in the gospel. You believe the gospel and then you're saved. That's how you're saved. You're not saved by any other thing. You're not saved by... You see? And when you, you're saved, you become a part of the body of Christ. A part of the body of Christ. All right? It's very important to understand this. You become a part of the body of Christ. Let's see, Ephesians 3, uh, 6. Ephesians 3, 6. Mm -hmm. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. So they are fellow heirs of the same body. Which body is this? The body of Christ, all right? Of the body of Christ. So you are a member of his body. Ephesians 5, 30. Let's see there. Ephesians 5, 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. We are members of the body, flesh, uh, members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. So we are members of Christ. So <laughs> if you're a member, how, do you think Jesus is going to mutilate himself? You know, throw a finger out when you see it and throw a hand out, throw the head out. Is it going to be possible? No. We are already members of his body. So this is a member of my body. This, this is my hand. If I have to get rid of my hand, I have to cut it out. So do you think Jesus is going to cut his members out? No, it can't happen. 1 Corinthians 12, 12. 1 Corinthians 12, 12. The Bible says, mm, we can read all the way to 14, 12, 12. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body, being, uh, being many, are one body. Also, uh, so also is Christ. For, for one spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. The body is not one member, but many. So you are a hand. Somebody else is the head. Another one is the, is the heart. Another one is the legs. You, you see, we are different members. One toe, one eye, one ear. You see, another one is there. So we are all members. We are all members fitted together in the body of Christ. All right? So you can't lose it. You can't lose it. I, I don't think here there's any way that you can be able to lose your salvation. All right? And 1 Corinthians 12, 12, uh, 26 Twelve twenty six, and where and whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. If something happens, uh, if something happens to you at, on, on your leg, the whole body you'll be feeling weak, you'll be feeling bad because your leg is paining, and all the whole body is paining as well. All right, if you have a headache, the whole body is weak. So one member suffers, all members suffers. 
And also the Bible says, uh, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. I used to remember when you were young and you do something and then you maybe you've come to school late in these public schools, primary schools, and then you have to be beaten and then you have to be spanked and you, you hold the table and the teacher is there trying to spank you. So the member of your butt is being spanked, but the whole body is crying. The eyes are crying. You're doing like this. You're, oh, the mouth is trying to tell the teacher, please, please don't do it. But it's not the mouth being beaten. It's not the eyes which are, are being beaten. They are only crying because of one member is being beaten. So we are all members. We are all members. Somebody once asked, is it possible to lose your salvation? If, if it were possible to lose salvation, would you get the Holy Spirit back? Would you get the Holy Spirit back if, if, if it was possible? You see, there are people who say, you lose your salvation, then come again, and then you're reconnected to God. You know, you, you, you. If, it, if you lose your salvation, can you get it back? Can the Holy Spirit come back? Let's see Hebrews 6 4. Hebrews 6 4. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 6 4. And we'll read all the way to 6. Uh, Hebrews 6 4 to 6. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tested the heavenly gifts and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. It is impossible. Those who have taken the Holy Ghost, all right, uh huh. And I've tested the good word of God and uh, the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away. You see the word which the Bible uses here is if. If. Meaning is not when they. You see the word when and if are two different words. If. If they fall away. If they fall away. Uh, it says here. If they shall fall away. To renew them again and to repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put uh, him to an open shame. It, it's, it's saying, <laughs> if they shall fall away to renew them again and to repentance, seeing they crucify themselves the Son of God afresh to put him into an open shame. Literally meaning, if you lose the Holy Spirit, it is really almost impossible to be able to get it back. It's really impossible to get the Holy Spirit back. Once he goes, he goes. And uh, it's not going to happen. So how do you expect it to happen? How do you expect you to lose your, uh, sal the salvation of Jesus Christ? Is it really possible? No, it's not possible. It's not really possible. All right? So those who think they can lose their salvation, most, most likely they saved themselves. They sell themselves from their works and things like that, all right? And uh, we see this one even happening. Jesus said something in Matthew uh, 7, 22 to around 23. Jesus said, uh, let me just come here. Matthew 7, 22. Matthew 7, 22. 22 to 23. Jesus says with his own words, mark these words, eh? Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. All right? He's saying, Jesus, we did all these good things. We cast out dem devils. We, you know, we prayed, we preached, we did all these kind of things. Huh? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you work. You that work iniquity. You workers of iniquity, depart from me. I never knew you. Why is Jesus not saying, uh, depart from me, uh, you know, like, I knew you until you sinned, or I knew you for three years, or I knew you until you did this and that. Let's say, for example, you go to, uh, you go to Mombasa uh, in that certain restaurant, and uh, you are there maybe uh, doing something or maybe having a cup of coffee with friends, and there's someone here next who has seen you, yes, he has not said hi to you, he has not said anything, but he was watching you all through. He was watching you all through and he never just said hello. And then days later, he meets you in Nairobi and he tells you, Hey, bro, do you remember me? Do you remember me? I've always seen you. We were together in the same restaurant in Mombasa. You'll tell him, excuse me, I never knew you. You might have seen me, but I never knew you. We have never had relationship. So the only way you can have relationship with Jesus Christ is how? 
through believing in the gospel. Believing in the gospel is like coming and saying, hi, my name is so and so and I know you here and I want us to be friends. You can only be friends with Christ through the gospel. You can look at him, you can stare, you can do all the things and you see, there's this one guy, uh, I think uh, during the time of the apostles when they were preaching and then one guy, I don't remember the name of, of, of that specific guy, he started he went to, you know, cast out demons one day. So he was casting out the demons and saying, you know, in the name of Jesus Christ, come out. One day those demons, they decided to tell him to, to, to fight him. You know, they fought him down and kicked him and, you know, tore all his clothes and they asked him, you're talking about Jesus. Jesus we know. Paul we know, but who are you? You see, that's the same way. Jesus saying, yes, you're saying that you did all these things, but who are you? Did I ever see you? And this one will even happen to even pastors and even people who have been in church for the longest time and they have never gotten to realize that they are saved or not. You see, there are two kinds of people in church. Those who believe in the gospel and those who believe that they believe the gospel. There are those who just believe, yeah, I, I know, I know I believe the gospel, but they have never heard the gospel, they have never understood it and... You see, all those kind of things. So it's really, really important to believe the gospel, to hear, make a relationship with Jesus Christ. All right? Jude 24, 25, the book of Jude. Jude is just, uh, I think, is usually the last, the last book before Revelation. 24, 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless, before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. So we are told Jesus is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. So if he's able to keep you faultless, all right, to keep you in short. So who is keeping you? Who is keeping your salvation? Jesus Christ. So if he's the one keeping you, then how do you fall from something that you're not even keeping yourself? How? How is that even possible? All right. We can see also again, Hebrews 7.25. Hebrews 7.25. Let's see there. Hebrews 7.25. We can read all the way to 27. 7.25, uh, 27. Wherefore is also able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing that he ever liveth to make intercession for them. So he's making intercession for us. Number 26, for such an high priest became uh, us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and has made higher and made higher than the heavens. All right, 926, let's go there. 926 to 28, for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. All right. Have he suffered since the foundation of the world? But now once in the end of the world has he appeared to put away sin in the sacrifice of himself. He sacrificed himself. And it is appointed unto men once to die, but have this judgment. So we're already seeing this. Let, let me also read verse 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look, for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So if you look upon Jesus, if you believe the gospel, look upon Jesus Christ, you will appear to him without sin, without any blemish, because he has already promised that. And once Jesus promises, Jesus is God. He can never lie. God will never lie. Hebrews 10.10 10. To 12. Let me just finish up by, by that verse. I, I know it's where we started, but let's read it again so that we can understand that very well. Hebrews 10, 10 to 12. By the which, which, uh, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. He offered himself once for all. Verse 11, and every priest standeth daily, ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. So if we've been told that we have been offered, a sacrifice has been done for us once for all, then how are you going to lose it? How are you going to lose it? Do you believe the gospel? Because unless you believe the gospel, you can never 
have a relationship with God. No matter how much you say about losing salvation and all these things, but unless you understand, you see, those people who think they can lose their salvation is because they saved themselves. The gospel is found. This is the gospel. I always like to give this gospel is in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, uh, 1 through 4. 15, 1 through 4. It talks about how Christ died. Christ died. Uh, sorry. Christ died for our sins. Christ died for our sins. Was buried. And then it says he rose again. According to the scriptures. Let me just abbreviate there. Scriptures. Alright. So the gospel is how Christ died. Was buried. He, he, he died for our sins. Was buried. Rose again according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. We can read it. Maybe it will be our final thing. Uh, word here. 1 Corinthians 15 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and where you stand. By which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Brothers, believe in the gospel. Brothers and sisters, believe in the gospel and you'll never miss it. This is the gospel. This is the only thing which can save you. And once you believe in the gospel, then you're saved. And once you're saved, you're saved once for all. God bless you. Have a great time. You can share the message to other people and edify the church.